Welcome to Frequently Asked Questions for Personal Conveyance and ELD. This is being brought to you by Ricky Von Honecker and KeepOnTheRoad.com. The following are some true or false statements in relation to personal conveyance and the ELD. See how many you get right and leave comments or questions below. First, true or false, you may use personal conveyance to go home after making a delivery and are empty. This is false. Traveling to your resting location, including your home or the terminal, is always considered a continuation of the run. Personal conveyance may only be used if you are out of hours and that is the closest reasonable resting location. Again, you must be out of hours at a shipper or receiver to do this, not out of hours on the road. True or false, you may use personal conveyance while loaded. True. Being loaded or empty does not determine the driving status. It's the purpose of the movement. As long as the movement is not advancing your dispatch and is for personal reasons only, then you may use personal conveyance. True or false, you may use personal conveyance to get work done on your truck. False. Anything that benefits your truck, including maintenance or a wash, is not personal conveyance. It is considered part of the job, therefore it is part working and must be recorded as such. True or false, when you run out of hours on the road, it is okay to use personal conveyance to find a safe haven. False. This has become a huge problem. And it's called a stop and switch. And officers are looking at this every time they do an inspection. They're looking for this. Very simply, towards the end of the drive day, the driver stops for a few seconds, switches from driving to PC, and then uses his personal conveyance to go, you know, the additional 10, 15, 20, maybe more miles to get to the truck stop. This is illegal. If you are unable to reach your destination before you run out of hours, you have options. Either you're going to go into violation, you're going to use the adverse driving condition, or you need to plan your trip better. Don't schedule yourself so that you're running towards the last minute to get to a truck stop. The DOT has clearly stated that lack of parking is not sufficient reason to go over your hours. So, you can only use PC to find a safe haven if you are out of hours at a shipper or receiver or you are out of hours and being told to move by a law enforcement officer. True or false, if your ELD becomes disconnected, it will generate a record visible to safety, dispatch, and the inspecting officer. True. Everything is recorded. Your ECM on your truck, your truck's computer, is connected to your ELD. The ELD will record the data from the ECM from its last connection, the hours, the mileage, the location, and then when you reconnect, it's going to record the same information. So even if you disconnect and reconnect at the same location, it's still going to report a difference in motor hours and a difference in the odometer. True or false, I do not have to be concerned with unidentified drive time before I start to drive. False. This is very important. All unidentified drive time, whether it was yours or not, must be addressed before you put the vehicle in drive. If the unidentified drive time was not yours, you reject that drive time. If the unidentified drive time was yours, you claim the drive time. If you are rejecting drive time, I do recommend that you notify your safety department as to why. Either it was before you were assigned to the truck or you had a mechanic move your truck uh, during your occupation of the truck. True or false, as long as my ELD is not showing violations, I am legal. This is false. 
This couldn't be further from the truth. It is so important that you do not rely on your ELD to tell you whether you are running legal or not. There are many exceptions that an ELD cannot calculate. There are also only specific things the ELD looks at. The ELD is only looking at your 8-hour, 11-hour, 14-hour, 70-hour, and 10-hour regulations. If you falsify or you lie to the app, the app is going to lie to you. Also, the app is, or the ELD is only looking for specific items that it can verify, like a signature. If you don't sign the log, the ELD will tell you you haven't signed the log. Uh, if your company requires an inspection report, it'll tell you that you have to fill out an inspection report. But very rarely will it tell you you have to change your trailer number. So if you swap trailers and you didn't update the trailer number, or you've hauled multiple trailers today and you didn't list every trailer, the ELD is not going to tell you that. Uh, if you failed to change your shipping document number, uh, the ELD is not going to tell you that. So it is important that you are familiar with the regulations and you keep your ELD current. True or false, it is okay if I forget to select personal conveyance or yard move before driving. Safety can fix that. This is false. Once an event is on the drive line, no matter what the reason, uh, you were sleeping and an officer came by and told you you had to move the truck, so you jumped in the seat, started the truck, and moved it. Well, that if you didn't select personal conveyance beforehand, which you could if you were out of hours, uh, it's going to go on the drive line, and it's going to stay there. Um, once an item is on the drive line, if you forget to select personal conveyance or yard move before you put the truck in gear, that event is going to stay on the drive line. You can make notations as to what it actually was, but it is it cannot be moved by the drive line, not by safety, not by the ELD company. Uh, that is the law when it comes to ELD. It was one of the regulations. True or false, if I drop my trailer at the shipper or receiver and I have hours available, I can use personal conveyance to drive to a truck stop or hotel as long as it is my nearest reasonable location to take my 10 hours. False. The key here is you have hours available. If you have hours available, you must use those hours to get to your resting location. Uh, the only time you can leave a shipper or receiver to get to a resting location is if you are out of hours. True or false, I use personal conveyance to get to my resting location so I can use personal conveyance to return to the shipper or receiver. This is false. If you are going to the shipper or receiver, you are working. So the only time you could have left the shipper receiver to get to your resting location under personal conveyance is if you were out of hours. You left, you took your 10 hours, and now you're returning. You are on duty and it should be recorded as such. These are the true or false statements. I hope they help clear up some items that have caused a lot of confusion uh, among drivers. Uh, I do have some additional tips and review we're going to go over. Number one, be careful what you use to describe your personal conveyance movement. Things like yard move, pickup, delivery, shop, safe haven, um, again, unless it falls under the exception, uh, are, are always going to get you in trouble. These are not personal conveyance movements. Uh, things I would recommend you use personal conveyance, food, laundry, Shopping, not shop, because shop could mean you're getting the truck work done. But if you're going shopping, that's fine. Uh, entertainment. These are items that, you know, are legal to use personal conveyance for. Just make sure you're being truthful about them. You have four logging options. It is important to understand the definition of those options. Driving. If you're behind the controls and the vehicle's in operation, you're driving. Off-duty. You can only use off-duty when you have no responsibility for the truck 
and you're free to pursue activities of your own choosing. Also, you need to be able to leave the premises if you wanted to. Okay, that is the definition of off-duty. Sleeper. If you are resting in the sleeper, then you are in the sleeper. Anything else is on duty. All other time that doesn't meet the definition of driving, off-duty, or sleeper is considered on duty. Your special driving options. So we have two special options. Number one, yard move. Very simply, you can only use a yard move when you are confined to a private property. If your movement is going to take you onto a public roadway, you may not use yard movement. Personal conveyance. Once you've reached your resting location, you may use PC for personal reasons. As I mentioned earlier, shopping, entertainment, food, etc. You can only use personal conveyance to get to your resting location if you are out of hours at the shipper or receiver or being forced to move by an officer when you are out of hours. Thank you for viewing and please subscribe for more content. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will reply to them as soon as I can.